Over the past two years alone, the amount of web designers or web design businesses that have been created is ridiculous. Whether you're a web designer looking to start your own business or whether you are looking to start a career within web design, you might be asking yourself like, is it still worth it? Is the hours that you need to invest in learning, the amount of money that you need to spend on courses or even university, is all of that worth it at the end? So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is exploring that and also exploring how you can actually make some noise and stand out in an industry that seems to be ever growing and becoming even more saturated as the months and years go on. And you see, the thing is, there has actually never been so much demand for web designers, for graphic designers, for UI designers, UX designers. In 2012, for example, 10 years ago, there was nowhere near as much demand then as there is compared to today. Back then, businesses weren't heavily relying on being online or generating online business or online sales, selling products online, whatever it might be. They had other ways of doing this and were relying on what we now call sort of outdated or traditional ways of marketing. But now in 2020, if you're not online, your business is dead. Like it might as well just not exist. So there is a huge need for businesses to have a website and therefore there is demand and need for web designers to exist and offer that service or skill. However, with that increase in demand and need in that skill, there has been a huge increase in the amount of people that have learned and can now offer that skill themselves. So that means that the competition has never been so fierce, so insane. Like there is, there is so much competition when it comes to being online and offering web design as a service. Okay, just take the likes of Upwork and even Fiverr. There's people on Fiverr offering websites for like a website design and build for a hundred dollars. There are so many freelancers on Upwork offering to deliver websites a lot cheaper than I imagine that you'd like to be selling them for yourself. Okay, so how can you possibly compete as a new web designer or someone looking to get into web design space with people that are offering to sell websites for around $100, okay? And the answer is you just don't. Okay? You don't compete with those that are selling websites at a much lower value than you want to be selling websites for yourself. And I'm gonna run through a few things that you can be doing and a few ways that you can perhaps adjust your thinking in order for you to make the most of the opportunity that is available as a web designer. Now the first thing I wanna talk about and this term gets thrown around a lot and I don't often use it, uh, it's mindset. Now hear me out, I'm talking specifically about just fully understanding and appreciating that there is still value, a lot of value in the skill, the service of web design, whether you are self-employed or whether you are looking to be a web designer for another company on an employed basis, like there's still a lot of value in that skill. And an example can be that even if you have a very similar skill set to someone that is offering websites for $100, for example, if you're based in the likes of the UK where I am, or if you're based in America, for example, you are still very valuable to a business that perhaps to them it's important that they work with someone that's local, that's native to their own country. Because sometimes when working with freelancers on Upwork, on Fiverr, or working with international freelancers, like that can come with a bunch of friction that perhaps business owners just sometimes don't want. So in order to make sure that their life is simpler and make sure that the, the work and the service that they need completing is done to a high standard, they, they often stay local. And by that, that means that you are a lot more valuable to that customer. All right, so the other things that you can do is differentiate yourself, okay, not being a commodity. Honestly, I can't stress how important this is. Like you generally have to find out for yourself what it is that makes you different from everybody else in the market, all of your competition. And it doesn't matter whether you're selling websites for $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, or even $100, okay? It, it doesn't matter. You need to find out what is unique to you. What are you good at, okay? And this could be the type of service that you offer. So you could be an expert in just WordPress. You could be an expert in just Webflow. You could perhaps have a unique style of design or the look and feel of websites that you create or the functionality you know, or more importantly what kind of results can you get for a business off the back of them having a website from you okay and focusing a bit more on results if you can actually change the way that you're positioning yourself and positioning yourself less 
as a web designer and more as a problem solver, then that alone is gonna differentiate you quite a lot from everyone else that's selling website designs based on how they look. Because you could be selling website designs based on the value that you bring to the business and the results that you bring to the business. That will make you stand out from those trying to sell website designs based on the design alone. Okay, that now brings us nicely onto the third thing and that is figuring out how you can nicely articulate the value and the results that you can deliver to a business. Because the most tricky thing to do would be you are really good at what you do in the sense of you can generate results but if you don't physically explain that to a potential customer or even a potential employer in a job interview then you're not really of much value at all okay and it sounds brutal but if you can really focus on how you can communicate your results communicate the value by being able to explain how you can fix real business problems, then you are gonna be a huge asset to that business, okay? And sometimes you'll need to educate a potential customer or even an employer on these things because perhaps they are still thinking a little bit short in that a website only needs to look good. Okay, sometimes a customer is so focused on websites looking a certain way, you know, they don't really appreciate the value of it solving problems or generating results. So if you can articulate that and educate them, you are gonna become a lot more valuable and be able to charge a lot more than someone that is just focusing on purely a design base. If all you do is compare yourself based on the look of a website, honestly, it is going to be, it's gonna be a race to the bottom, okay? And I'm seeing this a lot in the industry. A lot of web designers, then they're gonna kind of not raising the stakes there, they're bringing them down and it's literally a race to the bottom. You know, when you have people on Fiverr or Upwork offering to build websites and design websites for just $100, it literally is a race to the bottom and that's not what you wanna be competing with. Okay, now the next thing, we kind of already touched on it, but businesses do really value experts, okay? So you need to position yourself as the expert, right? And sometimes, even if you're getting started, you might not feel like you're an expert in your field, but ultimately to be an expert, all you need to do is know a little bit more than the person you're having a conversation with. Because if you know more, then in that conversation, you are the expert and you're gonna be seen as the expert. So you have to be really confident in yourself, in your skills, in your abilities, and you'll come across as confident and they'll believe that you are the expert. And being able to successfully generate results for a business by way of web design, honestly, you're gonna find that a lot more easy and you're gonna have a much more success. Okay, now another thing that I wanna mention here is the perceived value based on price, okay? A lot of people are selling websites super cheap these days, but the trouble is, as a business owner and a business owner myself, if I want a piece of work done, I'm not necessarily looking for the cheapest person to do it because I want it done right, okay? There is a perception that if you pay cheap, the work that you're gonna receive isn't very very good and businesses sometimes cannot afford to make that risk or take that risk and, and potentially make that mistake. Now I'm not necessarily saying that people that price their websites at $100 are going to be doing a bad job but it's all about perception. So you need to remember that if you're going to be pricing yourself super super low you're going to be perceived as less valuable perhaps less of an expert and everything that I've just spoken about will basically just become redundant. So pricing yourself a lot higher is not only going to make being a web designer worth it it's actually going to help you because when you price yourself at a few thousand dollars versus a few hundred pounds. The few thousand dollars, someone's gonna look at that and think, okay, they must know exactly what they're doing. They're highly skilled they're gonna be able to fix my problem, okay? So there is still a chance that they're gonna choose you over the one that's charging less, okay? So I want you to really think about and understand perceived value and what that means for your business because sometimes pricing yourself low and kind of just racing to the bottom is not gonna be doing you any favors at all. Okay, so that then nicely brings me on to the last point around pricing and it's, it's not lowering your prices, just to win the work, okay? Because again, you're gonna be racing uh, racing yourself to the bottom. You're gonna be underpricing your services. It's just, it will not be worth it. So if you are pricing super low, being a web designer, it, it won't be worth it because there's, there's so much that you need to do as a web designer these days. You know, in 2022, not only can you design a website, you can build it. You can use no code tools to build them like with Elementor and WordPress or Webflow and, and other platforms that are available. You also have to manage the project from end to end. Sometimes you might have to copyright. You might have to do the SEO. Okay, so because tools have become so widely available and expectations have kind of, I guess, been a little bit blurred, as a web designer, you tend to be taking on more roles that a full-time job would usually cover. So if you are pricing yourself stupidly low, you're going to find yourself very stressed and quickly thinking this is not worth it. So pricing is super important. And if you are wanting to be a web designer, I just want to tell you that it is still worth it, but you need to consider everything that I've just already spoken about. Okay, so as long as you have the right 
right mindset and you're able to articulate the value that you can bring to a business and charge your worth, you're gonna find huge success as a web designer and be believing that it is still worth it, okay? But if you go against everything that I've just said, if you are pricing yourself really, really low, it will be a race to the bottom and I generally think that you will believe that web design just isn't worth it anymore. So hopefully you found that video valuable. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. There's an end screen coming up with more videos for you to go and check out or go and check out the channel as well. I'd really appreciate that. If you do need any help with anything within your business or your agency, feel free to get in touch with me. Me and myself or the team would love to be able to help or just explore or just have a conversation with you and see what value we can bring. That's it for me. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.